Welcome to the podcast Stories from Palestine. My name is Crystal and I invite you to join me every week for interesting, inspiring and unexpected stories from Palestine. Seven years ago, I moved from the Netherlands to Palestine to be with my Palestinian husband. We live with our two children in Beit Safafa, a town between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. We run a cafe and a bar in Bethlehem. And before the pandemic, I used to take tourists on alternative tours to learn about the reality of life for Palestinians in the West Bank. As the world is in lockdown due to the pandemic and we cannot receive any tourists at the moment, I decided to share stories from Palestine as a virtual tour. And maybe one day when the world opens up again, you will be inspired to come and discover the beauty of Palestine yourself. I created the website storiesfrompalestine.info and the Facebook page Stories from Palestine, where you can find links, photos and background information. You can subscribe to my podcast so you will never miss an episode. Subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher or go to buzzsprout.com with double Z and search for Stories from Palestine to find the other podcast platforms that this podcast is listed on. And now get ready for a new episode of Stories from Palestine. <music> For today's episode, I interviewed Ayat Arafe. He is a local Palestinian artist from the Haitia refugee camp. He has his studio in Beit Sahur and he is part of an art walk that we created from our singer cafe to visit local artists in the town. Ayat, we are sitting here in your studio and we're in the middle of Beit Sahur, which is a small town close to Bethlehem. And we are sitting here in a beautiful old building with beautiful old stones. And this is the place where you do your art, right? A beautiful painting, is it? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just this, talking about the building, <laughs> but it is here surrounded with beautiful artwork, paintings, and I see woodwork, and I don't know what is this kind of installation that you put here, or is it, <laughs> is it something? Is it art? It, it is art. Because let me ask you a few questions before we start so that people know who is Ayat. What's your favorite Palestinian food? Of course, Makluba. <laughs> if I say something else, I, it, it would be Lakwir. You would be lying. <laughs> Makluba. Be, What's Makluba for people who don't know Makluba? Makluba, it's uh, a rice with uh, some vegetables with chicken. And what does it mean, Makluba? Upside down. After you cook it, you put it upside down, then... You lift up the pot. Exactly. Then it will look like, uh, like a cake. It's almost like a cake. Yeah, yeah. A rice cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ayat, what is your favorite Palestinian town or village or city? The, 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 the city I'm familiar with, I mean, the, I, I've been able to, to visit, is Nablus. Nablus has the, 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 the old uh, city and the old town as it is today, as it is before maybe 800 or 1,000 years ago. So that's why I'm in love with the city. When I, uh, I've been in, in to Akko, Akka, uh, yeah, I was uh, feel I'm in the magic. Yeah. It was like uh, two or three hours visit. I yeah, can't say. Akka is on the sea. On the sea. And you, that's something that you don't have access to. Ah, it's but I need... The first time I went there, I told them, I want you to take me to the... I was with a group, you know? told them, I want you to take me to the wall. Then they thought, just I wanted to look from to, to, uh, at the sea from the wall. But I, actually, I was wanted to jump oh, in the sea. Yeah. And they, they thought, I'm completely crazy because it's really dangerous and it's really high. Yeah. But I wanted to throw myself from that wall in... To the sea, it was amazing. Wow! Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll talk a little bit later about your uh, sea project also. <laughs> But before that, you are a Palestinian artist. Do you have an, a favorite Palestinian artist that's not yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's many. Yeah. There's many artists. I will say 
not only I love their works, I'm so much influenced by their work. Sleiman Mansour is uh, is is a real teacher, and yeah, for all Palestinian artists, I, I will say that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. As well, Nabil Anan, Taysir Barakat, Ismail Shamu, and other names, and as well, the, like yeah, young artists, uh, I feel I'm influenced by. Yeah. Did you know any of these artists when you were young? Is this something you learned over the time? Like who? How did you think about becoming an artist? Do you remember the moment when you were young and you were like, I love making art, or how, how did that happen? At the school, like any other story, stuff in school with a, with a child, my art teacher, he noticed that I have something different maybe. Then he collect all my drawings and suddenly, without even talking to me about that, He make a very small, tiny exhibition, but then he wrote on the top of the my drawings, the exhibition of the artist Taya Tafa. Oh. I, I was maybe in the seventh grade, in the eighth grade, something like that. So How did that make you feel? It's a big story I mean, to me. It's the moment, I think, that I realized that I have something. Yeah. It's like introducing the new identity of myself that I started to express myself through it. Like that, that is the starting point when I started to see everybody is looking at me with with something different. Yeah. Me, with the, that I have something special. Yeah. Did you know at that age, did you know any other artists? I saw a, a small painting of an artist, Khaled Horan, and I was in love with it. I was in love with, with the colors, with the shapes, with the, and then later he, he became my teacher at the, oh. where I study art. Actually. Wow! And now he's uh, my teacher, he's my friend, and he's someone I I I've learned a lot from him. And when when you decided to that okay, I want to study art, how did your family and your surroundings respond mm. to that? Mm. At the beginning, when I was young, yani, they they love it, yani, because the response of the of the people, ah, your son is, uh, he's an artist, he's good at that, because I was doing uh, some uh, graffitis and uh, murals on the wall, so they love it. But then, when I become at the university, you know, these questions start that uh, you you need to be a, an employee, and of course they are not. Compensed with art as something that could make me live, yeah. and I fight a lot to yeah, to keep myself as an artist yeah, and not employee. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I I think my family are satisfied with the, that. Yeah. yeah. And then where did you go? Where, yeah. where where can you study art in Palestine? Basically, there's there's a couple of universities where you can study art like Najah, like Dar al Kalima. But I feel myself lucky to be a student at the International Academy of Art in Ramallah, which now become part of Birzeit. Oh yeah, that's now part of the Birzeit University. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Can you rem- do you remember a, a a project that you did there that that formed maybe who you are or that yeah, was important in your art studies? Yeah, I will say my first project, art project, I started, it was about the sea. Yeah. Can you tell me about the project of the sea? I was interested to make a project that really belonged to my my deep desire, that really talked to me from inside. And I always, like, uh, when I read something about the sea... I only have just imagination because I never been to the sea before before that project. The image of the sea, the the song about the sea, the uh, stories about about the sea. Then I thought, like everything that I hear, I read, I listen to the music, to the songs, to the to the poems, to the stories, to all of that. It's like there's a sea in my culture, but it's not there anymore. It's like in another world. So. What if I try to make an access to the sea through art? It's like my art is like a magic man you know, with the with the with the stick you do thing yeah, and then and it's there. <laughs> maybe it's not there uh, physically and not, it's not there um, literally. But you go through a trip, you make a real trip 
going to to discover the sea inside you, not in the reality. Mm. And here I would like to say that I feel or I think that art is not to change the reality, but it's to create new reality, which that project teaches me a lot about art as a powerful tool yeah. to express yourself and as well to create your own world, which is not exist for the practical reality. Yeah. So how did you, how did you do it? Mm. I started to, to search to see if there's any features remain in the city. I went to the shops where they sell the fish. I talked to them uh, if and yeah, from where they bring the fish. How, uh, if they have an access, uh, if they have stories. I went to the shop where they sell the the live fish in a small bag. They give it to you with five shaking. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that that's the only things that remain besides, the, as I told you, the songs and the the jokes, the the why the why said I don't know what, or how you call them. The sayings. The sayings. Yeah. Um, but when I, I bought this small uh, bags with the, with the fish, I thought. That's an, an, an object that I can start to play with. I thought that I could try to make it a big one, like a giant bag. I wanted to see how it, how it will look like, how it will feel, how to, to, to fill it with water, what water I will fill it with. Then I thought, what if I fill it with a real tea water? water. Mm. So that's lead me to invite friends and everybody I know. Then I create a page on Facebook inviting people to send me from all over the from world. All over the world. From different seas even. From different seas. And they did. People did Many that. people did. And it arrived even. And arrived. Wow. And he, everyone ha- has his story and filling water from from the US, from France, from Morocco, from the Dead Sea, from Jaffa. And my neighbor, when he kn- knew about the project, he told me, listen, I want to, to, to participate in this. I like it. And he fell water from his water uh, Tank. storage tanks. And I, I like the idea. And yeah. I, even I went, to, I told him, uh, tell me when you are going to do that because I want to take a picture. Yeah. And it was a celebration. And what did you do with all this water? It was part of the exception. It was as well part of Palestinian young artist for Qatan, the Yaya. I feel this is not just a project for me, it's a journey. Meeting a lot of people who would like to tell me about their story when they fill up a bottle of water and how they try to send it. Send it to Palestine it was the, the Challenge. challenging part. And even uh, I had like a radio interview and later... The woman who make interview with me, she called me and she told me someone in the in the Israeli jail, he was listening to the um, to the interview and he wanted to send to send you butter water. Oh, um, yeah, from the prison. From the prison. Mm. So uh, I, I didn't receive his his butter, but um, in in thoughts he uh, was source. connected. But yeah. I received as well uh, butter water from Gaza. Oh. Somebody was visiting in Gaza, and then uh, somebody told when you know he's from Ramallah, he said, uh, I want to send a bottle of water with you to someone called Aid. He's, he's making small sea. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, you added all the water that you received in, into a bag, like in, literally? Into the bag. Uh, and I as well display the empty bottles. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And so the, the project was called uh, Sea Package. See package. Do you have still photos of that? Yes. Maybe we can upload on my sure. website and on the Facebook sure. page. And as well, if you if you search on Google, you you could find it. Yalla, let's go to Singer Cafe and see some of your work there because you did a lot of nice artwork in the COVID quarantine time. So we'll walk down from your studio to Singer Cafe and then see what you, what your uh, produ- productivity was. Yeah, Ayat, so we went from your studio to come to Singer Cafe. Singer Cafe is a cafe in the middle of the old city of Beitsburg as well. And um, 
before I start to ask you something about the paintings that we see here, uh, there is an important question that I didn't mm. ask you and that I think is relevant to understand a little bit more about who you are in your work. So, uh, Aya, the question is, where are you from? I'm from the Haitian refugee camp in Bethlehem, south of Bethlehem, but originally I'm from Castina. Castina is a village in Gaza Strip. Not in the Strip itself, before the 1948. It's very close to the Ramla, to Asdud, yeah, and very close to the sea. For people who have no much knowledge about the situation here, they may uh, think you live in a tent in a refugee mm. camp. Mm. Do you? Yeah, that's, I guess, a stereotype about like uh, being a refugee camp, living in tent. The tent still is uh, one of the samples that we still use till today because it's before the owner who built us a shelters and uh, the, the refugee can become less temporary as a, as, a, as a concept and as an idea. So we still attach to the tent to represent our uh, situation and our situation as a temporary situation. But right now you live in a house that replaced the tent. Exactly. The honor was started with the shelters after two years of living under the tent. And actually there is... Every family have a memory from the uh, grandfather, the old generation who lived actually in the tents. The life under the tent during this, the the, hot, the heat in the summer and, and the winter time. Yani if you when you hear it as a story, it's it's really like a real suffer. It's it's hard to imagine how really people lived for two years under the tent, and then so when the time came to the, to build the shelters with a concrete which means like staying more while the refugees from the first day in their mind they are going back to their homeland anytime but they were waiting actually for the shelters because they wanted to protect their life uh, the, the children from the summer and from the tough of life from the daily life yeah and can you explain how you're growing up in a refugee camp uh, how did it shape you? And especially when we speak about expectations that we have from you also mm. as an artist. That's very, very normal because we have like a collective suffer. There is this expectation to represent this suffer and the life of refugees under occupation. And the, the, as well, the, 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 the daily action that happened, yani, of course, yani, th- that's very normal to expect any anybody to represent the suffer, to talk about it, to express about it. But as, as, as an artist, I can't be just like a reporter or something. I want to represent the suffer of my life, my, uh, my people, but in my, my own way. Through, first of all, to contact to, my, to myself, to know my identity, like who I am. It's just, I'm talking about myself as uh, a human being living in a refugee camp or I'm a Palestinian with a long history or I'm talking about the future or about myself with all this confusion situation. I want to refer back to an exhibition that was in Sinner Cafe before mm-hmm. the, the present exhibition because you, about a year ago, you had other paintings here and those paintings represented bulls. And I'll mm-hmm. post some pictures also on my website and on the yeah. Facebook page for the listeners to see. And in these paintings, the bull really represented something powerful, the, or at least that is the maybe the expectation we have of the bull, mm. that he is the powerful and the strong one. Mm. But then you had the bulls represented sometimes in situations that were very unexpected. I uh, remember there was a painting with a bull in a kitchen setting, yes. and a bull with another female that I felt hard to distinguish whether which one was in front of the other one. Mm. They were sort of overlapping each other where you could mm. imagine the question who is the stronger or who is the important? Is there any equality between them? So can you tell me why did you choose this mm. the bull as symbol? Well first of all the bull is my sign. Zodiac sign. The, my zodiac sign. Is a, is a bull and I find it very interesting match and uh, links linking the bull to my identity and uh, as a way to explore my identity the male the masculine in in my community who I feel this creature the bull you feel he's like in even in the mythology he created to be a fighter I wanted as well to explore this identity if I want to be a fighter or not yeah, and if to be a fighter, 
fighting for what? Of course, I want to be uh, like a freedom fighter, but I want to choose my own tools and my own way not to be forced to fight. That's why I make the, the ball in many different images to go beyond the stereotype and the, the image, the stereotype of the image of the ball as a fighter. And because this creature, how his muscles and all of this, and I feel myself like as how I expected to be like a, a man strong and muscled and all of that. But at the same time, I feel that I am as a male in this community, I'm oppressor, a real oppressor of the woman, of anyone who's weaker than me. You know? and at the same time, I'm the, I'm the oppressed by the occupation. So I need to, to conscious this and to, to go really deep in my identity as, as a male, as, uh, as someone who's his mother raised me to be like that. And I'm not saying that the, the, my community are aggressive or something. No, my community is generous people and friendly and loving. But at the same time, in the, in the, in, in the, deep, of, in the deep of the identity of the male is aggressive because as well of the situation and very violent because of the situation but we need to know that in our liberating process we cannot liberate ourselves before we liberate our mind and soul and to be equal with the with the women who are, who are the real fighter in this double oppressing from the male and from the occupation yeah, and here I would like to connect to what we are seeing here in Sierra Dufay because you made uh, paintings during the COVID quarantine time and some of them are here right now and the, the theme of these paintings is the cactus. I yes. see cactuses, cactus fruits and this is also in a way related to mm. women, yes. you told me. Can yes. you explain? First of all, cactus in Arabic means sabr. Sabr mean uh, patience, and this is a sample that many Palestinian artists used it as uh, as one of the elements that express or represent our patience. But during the, the quarantine time, like I was um, thinking of the time that I spent in one one place, and I was really like. Imagining this quarantine is an is a opportunity to think of other things and to, to feel with other people like I felt like a woman in my community who stay in the same place in the house taking care, care of every detail and not really able to go out till late so I felt that that is as well it's make me conscious more about how women's life under the not only the, the quarantine the the whole life in quarantine picking a cactus literally because many women in the in the villages are really uh, uh, kicking um, picking a cactus and maybe sell it in the market in the public market but the women in general in my community I think they are really picking cactus every day with the daily life uh, details and the challenges with the man with the with with the all. Uh, I don't I don't want to say suffering, but uh, it it is actually suffering. Mm. So I wanted to make this painting about woman picking cactus every day with the children, with the school, with the with, with the father, with the husband, with the with all of that, and she's patient. And she's fighting, and she never stopped. The resilience of the women. Mm. It's beautiful. Listen, um, do you only do paintings, or do you also do other kinds of artwork? Yeah, I do uh, installations, I do uh, some video arts, but more I do paintings, because I love colors, and I love standing on the front of canvas, and I like feel free to just make stupid things, or make it... Um, but I do some installations, like I did the sea package. Yeah. There, there is currently, there is one of your installations also in Batesburg, in a bar downtown, in Al Jisra bar. So let's go there. Yes. And then we can see it, and then you can uh, explain me a little bit more about that one. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> Can I have a beer? 
Yeah, here uh, we are at the Jisser Bar in Beta Hoor. And here I can uh, see one of your installations. I'm going to try and describe it. And then I really want to know what you have to say about it, okay. Ayud. So what I see here, we are in a, a location that is part of the bar. But it's the, the, the part where they do the concerts. And it opened just before the pandemic, so there hasn't been really any concerts yet here. And on the stage, there is a structure that is made of a, maybe kind of, now let's say maybe it's not steel, but it looks like steel. Four poles that form a kind of square in which there are lines, ropes hanging down. And there are five yellow J not jars. Gallons. 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 Oh, yeah. It's what they use here in Palestine uh, for, for example, storing olive oil. Olive oil. So. Yeah. So they, they are hanging five next to each other, right next to each other. And it looks like the uh, Newton, Newton pendles. Yeah. <laughs> that we, we used to have one when we were small in yes. my parents' bedroom. And my sister and me, we used to use that all the time. You would pull one of those silver balls up to the right or to the yeah. left let it go, it will just stick towards mm. the other ones and then on the other side it will come up and you could watch that forever. Mm. That's what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it is. It is exactly uh, wh where it comes from. Yeah. Newton Bender. So, how did you come up with this? It's really, it looks fantastic. I'll post uh, another picture on my website and Facebook because mm. you really got to see this. It came from the pendulum. But I used here uh, uh, gallons, which it used for the olive oil or water. It does not make that exact move as the, the one you mentioned. This one is just moving to the right, to the left. And uh, I chose with that installation to be here in Al Jasser, this place where it can be music performance or I chose this installation to be with maybe with the music uh, show as a performance for the installation that moved to the right and left. We still work, me and other guys, we will uh, work on our performance and the installation is just will display this moving to the right and left. And I was so much interested in this moving, but you are stay where you are. Ah, oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then other musicians, maybe, or uh, DJs will create the music, depend on that moves. Ah, so it could be some sort of interdisciplinary show. Exactly. If there was, if, they, if we could have shows. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's pretty unfortunate. Yeah. And uh, I... You, you can um, have your work, artwork here in Palestine, but how difficult or easy is it for you to have some exhibitions in other countries, maybe? I participated in, in a group exhibitions abroad, but the, the only chance that I had to exhibit individually as a solo exhibition was only in Beirut. Here I would like to, to thank Ziad Ablaban, who's as well from the Asia refugee camp, whose work and live in Beirut. And I like to thank him especially because he was, I felt it's his own project. Uh, and he wanted to say exactly what I wanted to say. And as well because Beirut, is part of our memories and part of the history of Palestine and fighting and all of that. There is many songs that introduce Beirut for us, so we feel Beirut it's uh, it's part of our memory. And Ziad Abu Laban, who prepared completely like like a full job for him, he prepared from A to Z the exhibition because he wanted me and my, my work to be presented in Beirut and it's like we share this project together and what did you exhibit in Beirut <laughs> I yeah. Exhibited, <laughs> yeah I exhibited some of my paintings and the, the exhibition was called from Jerusalem to Beirut mm. And so it was, for me, the most amazing experience to be in a country like uh, Lebanon because, like, I've never been in uh, Arab countries before. I've always been, in, yeah, been able to be in, in Europe or in the U.S., but for me, that was an amazing experience by being there and exhibit my work and talk to the people there and the response of the people about 
my work. It's for them. It's like a window from Palestine is opening there. And so is it very hard for Palestinians to go to other Arab countries and the way around? Is it difficult? It, it is in a way difficult by the experience of the people. Not, you, you don't find many people are able to to travel because of not so much access for us as Palestinians to even sometimes to move from a city to another city. And so traveling is a big, uh, big yeah. issue and you have to think 100 times before you because it, sometimes it takes you two days traveling يعني, or maybe 35 hours traveling. So we think too much before we decide yeah. to, to So this to is travel. due to the Israeli restrictions on movement, of course, of course. the checkpoints that they put up in between Palestinian territory. And, and so for you, if you wanted to travel to Lebanon, how did you travel from where to where? I travel uh, to Jericho and Jericho, I cross three different passing ports, the Palestinian, the Israeli and then the Jordanian. And then we go to airport because... Of course, here we don't have any access to airport, and as a Palestinian, we don't have airport or po- por. a port. A port, yeah, yeah. seaport. Mm. Yeah, seaport. Yes. It's a beautiful country. I heard. It's a very beautiful country. Yeah. Mm. So, th- so we know that Lebanon probably looks much like the northern part of mm. uh, historic Palestine. Yes. Is, that's today's Israel, mm. and that's what you cannot visit. Exactly. So maybe you felt like that because in Lebanon you could see what your country could have been like exactly. if it hadn't been because taken away. Because as well, Lebanon has the same texture, the same culture, the same view of Palestine. And like you have the exactly as what you said, you experience how your country would looks like without occupation. If you had had access to the sea. Exactly. Yeah, that was very special to me. Ayat, I want to thank you very much for spending some uh, time with me talking about your artwork. I think that through your eyes, I learned so much about thinking who you are, where you're from, what that, how that affects uh, what people think of you, expectations they have from you, and that you are using your art as a window for not only people to learn something, but I often think that you use your art also as a window to your own soul. Exactly. I would like to thank you as well for inviting me for this amazing uh, podcast. You can find photos of Ayat's work on his Instagram, Ayat Arafe. If you want to know how to write that, go to my show notes or to my Facebook page, Stories from Palestine, or the website, storiesfrompalestine.info. Because you can only really learn something about a country by knowing its language, I ask my daughter Louisa every week to teach you a new Arabic word. So Louisa, which Arabic word are we going to teach the people today? Um, yalla. Yalla. What does it mean? Let's go. Means let's go. But you can also say it in a different way. Yalla. Yeah, when you're impatient. Yalla. 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 Thank you, uh, Louisa. Shukran. Shukran. You have been listening to Stories from Palestine, a podcast that focuses on history, cultural heritage and stories from Palestine. You can subscribe to Stories from Palestine on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts or search Stories from Palestine on buzzsprout.com and find all the other podcast platforms that this podcast is listed on. You can stay connected with me and my guests on the website storiesfrompalestine.info and on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I post photos, links and more background information. I really appreciate donations to support this podcast, especially during this pandemic that brought a complete halt to the tourism sector. You can find my PayPal account on the website, Facebook or in the show notes on Buzzsprout. PayPal.me slash Chris Justice. I look forward to you joining again next week for another episode of Stories from Palestine. <laughs>